Hi pals, welcome to lab. Today we're going to be reading Nate the Great and the Musical Note by Marjorie and Craig Shermat. I, Nate the Great, am a detective. This afternoon I was cleaning up after a big case. I was sitting in my bathtub singing. My dog Sludge was howling. I heard a third sound. The doorbell was ringing. I stood up. I rushed toward the door. I stopped. I, Nate the Great, was all wet. I grabbed a towel and my detective hat. I answered the door. Pip was there. I have to come see you, he said. Pip's hair covers half his face. I'm surprised he sees anything. Why did you come to see me? I asked. Pip didn't answer. Pip di doesn't say much. Do you need a detective? I asked. Do you have a case to solve? Pip shook his head up and down twice. Then he opened his mouth. Right away, hurry, he said. Pip handed me a piece of paper. It was a note from Pip from Rosamond. I knew it would be strange. I read the note. A musical note from Rosamond. Dear Pip, your mother phoned. At four o'clock when your lesson is through, this is what you have to do. A note. Step left until you reach the middle. Step up and you will solve this riddle. Your piano teacher, Rosamond. I read the note once. I read the note twice. I read it three times. Some things get better with time. Rosamond's note just got stranger. I could see why Pip needed me. You're taking piano lessons from Rosamond? I asked. Pip shook his head up and down. At Rosamond's house? I asked. At Rosamond's garage, he said. I went there to take my lesson, but I found this note instead of Rosamond. Do you have any idea what your mother wants you to do at four o'clock? I asked. Pip shrugged. Do you know where your mother is? I asked. Pip shrugged again. So what does the note mean? He asked. It means that I, Nate the Great, have a case I must solve by four o'clock. It is 10 past three. We don't have much time. I got dressed fast. I wrote a quick note to my mother. We must go to Rosamond's garage, I said to Pip. Pip, Sledge, and I rushed to Rosamond's garage. I heard piano music. I knew we were on the right track. I rushed into the garage. I rushed out of the garage. Annie and her dog Fang were in there, sitting on a piano bench. Annie was playing it on an old piano. Fang's mouth was open wide. He was getting ready to sing, or bite. I didn't want to find out which, but I had to look for clues. I went back into the garage with Pip and Sludge, slowly. Annie stopped playing the piano. Fang closed his mouth. I was glad about that. I held up Rosamond's note. Do you know anything about this? I asked Annie. No, Annie said, and Rosamond isn't here. She went out to buy stars. Stars? Yes, Rosamond sticks a star on you if you had a good music lesson. But now she's late for my lesson. It was supposed to start at three. Suddenly, Pip spoke. Hey, so is mine, he said. Rosamond needs more than stars, I said. She needs an appointment book. I turned to Pip. Show me where you found your note. Pip pointed to the music stand just above the piano keys. Right there, he said. I looked at the piano. It was scratched and sagging and peeling, but this was not a clue. I looked around the garage. In the middle of it, I saw some wide wooden boards on top of some old blankets. There was a sign on it. It was strange, but it was not a clue. Or was it? Sit down at the piano, Pip, I said, as if you were taking a lesson from Rosamond. Annie moved over. Pip sat down between Annie and Fang. He was brave. I, Nate the Great, thought about where Pip would be if he took some steps to the left. He would be in the middle of the garage. That fitted with the riddle. Then, if he stepped up, he would be on Rosamond's stage. I had solved the case. It was my easiest case. Or was it? Sludge and I sat down on the stage. I was thinking, why would Pip's mother want him on the, this stage? It was full of splinters. It was not a good place to be. It couldn't be the answer. I said, we will have to wait for Rosamond to come back and tell us what the note means. Pip spoke up. I already did that. You talk too much, I said. 
We all waited and waited. How long could it take to shop for stars? Too long. What if Rosamond didn't come back until after four o'clock? Suddenly, I saw something shiny. Rosamond walked into the garage carrying a bag full of stars. She was followed by her four cats, Super Hex, Big Hex, Plain Hex, and Little Hex. They were covered with stars. I held up Pip's note. What does this mean? I asked. Rosamond smiled. Pip's mother phoned with a message. I turned it into a music lesson. Pip had 15 minutes of piano lessons, so he should know what my notes mean. You're a sharp detective, so you should also know what it means. I, Nate the Great, know what this means. It means I still have a case to solve. Rosamond grabbed my arm and pulled me over to the piano. How about a piano lesson, she said. Pip, Annie, and Fang got off the bench. Rosamond sat down. I'm going to play the scale starting from middle C. Watch my finger as it moves to the right. No, I said. You watch me as I move out of this garage. I am leaving. Rosamond grabbed my arm again. Watch, middle C. D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Rosamond played eight white notes in a row on her piano. I just played a scale starting with middle C, she said. Got it, Nate? I, Nate the Great, got it, but I didn't want it. I started to sneak out of the garage. Rosamond kept on. See the black notes. A black note is called a sharp when it's just above a white note. And it's called a flat note when it's... Rosamond stopped talking. She got up and pulled me back to the piano. I'm not done, she said. I gave my cat singing lessons. Do you want them to know more than you do? Do you want them to have more stars than you? Yes, I said. Rosamond pressed a white key near the middle of the keyboard. I knew it was middle C. I, Nate the Great, am a fast learner. Superhex screeched middle C. Very good, Rosamond said. Sludge did not think so. He ran out of the garage. Rosamond moved her finger up to the black note above middle C. I knew it was C sharp. This is Big Hex's favorite note, she said. I, Nate the Great, did not want to hear Big Hex screech C sharp. I ran after Sludge. Pip ran after me. Rosamond ran after Pip and me. You owe me five cents for the piano lesson, she said to me. Then she reached for Pip. It's time for your lesson. You only have until four o'clock. Pip turned, took two steps, and tripped over Sludge. Rosamond pulled a hairbrush out of her pocketbook. She brushed Pip's hair back from his eyes. Now you can see where you're going, she said. I said, I will be back when I've solved the case. I turned to Sludge. We must look for musical clues. We have to go where there's music. Sludge ran ahead. I knew where he was going. Five minutes later, we were at the band concert in the park. Sludge and I sat down under a tree. We have to listen hard, I said. We have to use our ears and our eyes. Sludge got up. He took one step to the left. He took one step to the right. He stepped backward and forward. Sludge was dancing to the music. Sludge was not dancing to the music. A bee was after Sludge. I went to rescue him. Now the bee was after me. The bee buzzed away. Let's go home, Sludge, I said. I, Nate the Great, needed pancakes. Pancakes helped me think. Sludge and I started to walk home. We walked fast. I only had until four o'clock to solve this case. Did I have any good clues? I had a strange musical note that told Pip what he had to do at four o'clock. But if he did it, he would still be in Rosamond's garage. I did not see or hear any clues in her garage. All I got was a strange piano lesson. I did not see or hear any clues at the band concert. All I got was a buzzing bee after Sludge and me. I kept thinking and walking. I had to take this case one step at a time. One step at a time? I looked at Sludge. Sludge, you're a genius. Your dance steps that weren't dance steps at the band concert have just solved the case. Sludge and I took giant steps back to Rosamond's garage. We stepped inside. Pip was playing the piano. Rosamond was leaning over him. Annie and Fang were watching. Stop the music, I said. I, Nate the Great, have solved your case, Pip. 
Please get up. Step left to the middle of the garage and step up. Pip followed my directions. I'm on the stage, he said, and I, Nate the Great, say that's where your mother wants you to be at four o'clock. Why? Pip asked. I said, when Sledge and I were at the concert in the park, I thought I saw Sledge do dance steps. That gave me the answer to this case. I don't get it, Pip said. I will explain, I said. Rosamond gives piano lessons to you and Annie. Rosamond gives singing lessons to her cats. So Rosamond gives different kinds of lessons. So what, Pip said. I, Nate the Great, say that the steps in Rosamond's note are a double clue. Ordinary steps to get to the stage and dance steps after you get there. At four o'clock, your mother wants you to start taking dancing lessons from Rosamond. Rosamond clapped her hands. That's a wonderful idea, but it's the wrong answer to this case. I looked at Sludge. He wasn't a genius yet. Maybe later. I will be back, I said. Sludge and I rushed out of the garage and went home. It was getting close to four o'clock. There was only time for quick pancakes. I gave Sludge a bone. I had to eat fast and think faster. Rosamond said I was a sharp detective, but this case had fallen as flat as my pancakes. Rosamond said that Pip should know what her note meant because he had taken piano lessons. But what about the steps? I knew they were not dance steps, and suddenly I knew more. Pip was supposed to take the steps on the piano. I looked at Rosamond's note again. She had underlined the words, a note. Why did she underline them? Because it meant something. It meant an A note on the piano. I, Nate the Great, knew where an A note was. I too had taken a piano lesson from Rosamond. I got a piece of paper and a pencil. I drew a picture of the piano keys that Rosamond had used to play the scale. Then I put my finger on the A note. I moved my finger to the left. I kept going until I reached middle C, the middle of the riddle. So if Pep stepped up from the middle with his finger, where would it be? He would be at C sharp, Big Hex's favorite note. The answer to Rosamond's riddle was C sharp. I, Nate the Great, had the answer to this case at last. Only one problem was left. I did not know what the answer meant. And I had only five minutes left to find out. I looked at Sludge. He was happy eating his bone. This had not been a good case for Sludge. He had almost been stung by a bee, and Pip had tripped over him. How could Pip trip over a dog? Pip's hair covers half his face. It's hard for him to see anything. I knew that from the beginning, but at last I knew it was important. Sludge had helped with the case after all. He had let himself be tripped over. Sludge and I rushed over to Rosamond's garage. We walked in. Pip was playing the piano. Rosamond was teaching. The cats were singing. I said, I, Nate the Great, have solved the case. The answer to the riddle is a piano note. The note is C sharp. At four o'clock, Pip is going to C sharp. Pip spoke up. What do you mean? You are going to get a haircut, I said. So you will C sharp, right, Rosamond? Right, Rosamond said. Pip's mother said she's taking him for a haircut, but I like the idea of dancing lessons better. So do I, Pip said. I hate haircuts. Pip stopped talking. Pip started running. Pip started tripping. He really needed a haircut. He fell over Superhex. Superhex screeched middle C. I picked up Pip. Rosamond picked up Superhex. The case was over. I reached into my pocket, pulled out five cents, and gave them to Rosamond. Then Sledge and I left the garage, walked to the street, turned, and started home. I was singing. Sledge was howling. I heard a third sound. Bells were chiming four o'clock. That's the end of the book. Thanks for listening. Yeah.